It's that time again. You've been waiting. We're here to deliver. Wednesday night, half the week is dead. The party always starts on Wednesday nights. Fuck Friday. We'll get to that eventually. It is Wednesday night. It is the Metal Summit. We are your island of misfit toys. This is everywhere you need to be, everywhere you want to be, and the party starts now. As always, we are Bobby Dreyer. We are the Psycho Steve. We are Angel. I'm Jay. And before I kick it into our guest for today's episode, I'm actually going to kick it down to Brother Bobby Dreyer, who has a couple of uh, announcements, a couple of things that he wants to say on the Metal Summit's behalf. Bobby Dreyer, it's all you, brother. First thing first, before we do anything, I have to give accolades to our brother and Mr. MC, uh, Steve. Psycho, well, just Steve last weekend for doing a tremendous job for the United Way of Central Pennsylvania, for youth mental health, with all the bands and everything, battling the heat and everything. Steve, you kicked ass, you know? Angel, I, I, you know, feel for you leaving a little bit early on Sunday, but Steve, what a great job. What a great call of what you did there. And, and Jay, before we started off, I got a call on the way over here. So, you know, it's premature announcement. You know, it's kind of like ejaculation, but announcement. So I got a call from our guest for next week, confirmed confirm he will be staying here with me and he's doing a free concert june 23rd in doylestown at the kids castle which is an amphitheater here and i'll post all that so it's mark hudson uh oh gosh uh mark and uh uh, Gary Burr, who Gary is a, a Grammy nominated singer, play, sang, wrote with everybody. Uh, but Mark will be here next week. It'll be Tony's 79th birthday. Tony will be on with us as well. But Mark is doing a free concert in Doylestown. We, I want to open it up for everybody. Mark, they're going to be doing hits from uh, the name of the band is Mulholland Drive. So they do everything there. But Mark produced Ozzy, Ringo, Aerosmith, blah, 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 Hanson. So you name it, and you don't know what's going to happen next week. Buckle up. Hold on tight. Next Wednesday is going to be the shits. (laughs) Here we go. You heard, you heard it here first, guys. You know we typically kind of dangle the uh, dangle the bait in front of you guys you for a couple of days until Friday. But this was a big one. If any of us remember, if any of you guys, which I know you do, remember our Desmond Child episode, like <laughs> Mark Mark Hudson is. It's one of those guys. You know, hit maker extraordinaire, very physically colorful guy. As yes. many of you guys definitely are probably familiar with. So. Early announcement. We love you guys so much. Thank you so much, Bobby. But early announcement next week will be musician producer Mark Hudson. So definitely stay tuned. Living on the edge, everything else. So it, it's going to be the bomb. Buckle up. I'm telling you, no holds bar. Get your questions in early. Angel, I, I swear, <laughs> they're going to be I'm up for it. out there. Look, he Bring it on. Here and everything else. So you guys do your homework. Work, do your research, everything. Hold on. Let me get ready for next week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already doing it. He called me tonight and he's like, Bobby, I'm staying with you on the 23rd. I'm going, oh shit. <laughs> so, and again, free concert in Doylestown, June 23rd. I'll be posting that as well, which is going to be amazing. But right, right. And and next and so and next and next and next week, yeah. So that's Two weeks free show in Doylestown on the 23rd and next week on Wednesday, that'll be the 16th for Mark Hudson. I so know. Absolutely. But bringing it back on point, Steve, oh, fantastic wait, wait, wait. job, bro. Again, you know the that only event this weekend in Maryland, yeah. uh, have a grace. So it's a little change of a venue. So we want to get that out there really quick. So people don't go, Oh, I went down to Cancun canteen. I'm going, no, wrong place. Exactly. Uh, Can- Cancun Cantina will be a little bit later in this interview as we discuss um, with our guests. But yeah, on Sunday, the next BLE and the next Bradley event from our 
our sponsor and our brother Bradley with Angie and Don. That will be on Sunday, headlined by Danger Danger's own Ted Poley. So that's oh, yes. definitely going to be very, very exciting. But again, Steve, fantastic job, brother. We know that Appreciate was definitely you. a tough one. Nothing that you yes. couldn't handle. And you're a little froggy because of it. But <laughs> Absolutely. Um, the, guy, the guys were there to support. I was watching it all day, you know, in between shifts at work and stuff like that. You really did a fantastic job, brother. Well done. Hey, thank you. I got called up to Eric Martin to sing with him. And yeah, I can't even so... carry a tune even if I had an iPod. It looks you could like add that to your resume. Right now that we think it's Gandhi or you're in labor. <laughs> I think he's in labor. <laughs> it, yeah, but it's a labor of love. The first exactly. pale. Yeah. So let, but here we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna bring it back a little bit here, boys. We're gonna bring our guest in for this episode. Guitar player, fantastic dude, coming to Maryland next month to open up the M3 Festival at Cancun Cantina for the M Pre Festival that's being done by both Dave Dillman at Detoxin and Bradley with BLE. We are bringing in Sniper Chris Howman from the Midnight Devils. Hey, what's up? Yeah, man, Chris Heinlein. Thank you so much, brother, for spending your evening with us, man. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. You know, uh, I'd just be sitting here watching Star Trek with the cats and eating nachos anyway, playing guitar. But, you know, I'd rather talk to people about music anyway. So, fuck, this will be great. Well, let's definitely do that, man. So why don't we just start right in a little bit of back history on the band for anybody who's not familiar. The Midnight Devils, it's yourself, Sam Spade on bass and vocals, and Jimmy Mess um, on drums. Talk a little bit about the forming of, of the band and how you guys kind of came together. Okay. Uh, well, initially, uh, the, the Midnight Devils started as a two-piece acoustic duo that me and Sam were... Uh, we were playing in another band, a, a tribute, 80s tribute band, and uh, the singer was having health issues and he didn't want to tour as much. So we went and did that and we did a few shows and we said, well, this is like four years ago, five, yeah, four years ago, maybe five years ago. And we were doing some small clubs and we were playing, we were dressed in total glam with acoustic guitars were painted pink and everything, you know, and we we're doing all these shows and Around here, I live in Omaha, and around like here, Iowa, Nebraska, Missouri, Kansas, it didn't go over real well with like some of the other guys that, you know, the farmer type dudes, but the girls sure loved us. And uh, <laughs> so we decided to get a drummer. And so we got a drummer and started doing electric shows. And I think it was four years ago, we were going to Rocklahoma and we had this drummer and we were playing a show in Kansas City at the Riot Room on a Monday night. And then we were going to a couple of shows. Then we were going to the Camp Jaeger at Rocklahoma to perform. And he, uh, the drummer just up and left us, like took his pedals and his suitcase and he left and left us in a bind. And so we called every drummer we knew and a couple of friends of ours suggested Jimmy, who me and Sam met at Rocklahoma the year before when he was in Prots of Addiction. And uh, we called him up and he, he said, uh, yeah, I can do it but you got to come get me. And I'm in Chicago. So we drove to Omaha. I took a nap. Sam rented a car, drove to Chicago, picked Jimmy up, turned right back around. We got back in the van. They slept while I drove to Rocklahoma. And uh, that's how we met Jim. Uh, that's how we got Jimmy in the band. But we met Jimmy the year, the year before when we saw Prophets of Addiction at Rocklahoma and they were playing the, uh, I think it was called the Retrospect stage back then. Okay. And, uh, he uh, he thought me and Sam were cool, and he's like, I can do this. And so we started playing, and that was like three years ago. So that's how Jimmy joined the band. He basically, Jimmy's a great dude, and he had I sent him links on his phone so he could listen to them while they were driving of the originals, and he he knocked it out of the park. He did an amazing job, you know. Nice. So and then so me and Sam were pretty stoked because Jimmy was super cool, and he kind of thought like we did that we could you know be like you know, more like more, more neon and bigger hair, everything, you know? So it was like a match made in hell. It was perfect, you know? For sure, man. And so follow that up for anybody who's, um, who's seen the Midnight Devils live, for anybody that's currently watching that hasn't, definitely check them out on YouTube because it's fantastic. So talk a little bit about your guys' stage show. It's very unique. 
big hair, crazy makeup, insane neon colors, but a very energetic stage show. What was kind of the thought process about what you guys wanted to put out there visually? Well, I mean, for one thing, all three of us, we're, we have a little bit different backgrounds as far as that, but we all agree that like glam was like the glam metal, glam rock, whatever you want to call it, uh, was like exciting and kick ass and we like to play it. And some of the bands we grew up on like Kiss and the New York Dolls and stuff like that. You know, you see, go see Kiss and it was like bigger, better, better than anything you ever saw. And then at during the 90s and the even the 2000s, you go see bands and they just look at their shoes all night long and you're like, what the hell? Is, they didn't even move. And we're like, what's this? So we were like, me and Sam were like, the blueprint is there. All you got to do is be like Kiss or Van Halen and, and you know, the whole from like 82 to like 88, 89, there's the, the blueprint is there. If you want to, you know, go people want to go to the show and have fun. Not because anybody can go be, go play songs and just stand around and look at each other. I mean, that's what a lot of bands do. And I'm not putting them down. I'm just saying that some bands do that. That's not what we do. There's a lot of movement on stage and a lot of sweat and a lot of smell, you know? So we like to have fun and it, it's fun for us. So it's, it's hard to stand still and play music for, for me. I know it is for Sam too, you know? You drink like 15 Red Bulls, you're ready to go, you know? So, and Sam, Sam has a way of talking to the crowd. I mean, you've seen us live, you know what I'm talking about. Sam re uh, really gets the crowd involved in the whole show. He goes out in the crowd and sings and uh, he, we, there's a lot of sing-along songs and chant-alongs. And so to get the crowd involved, it really, really makes it a, a fun, fun time instead of just, hearing the same old songs and them saying, okay, tip your bartender and waitress, blah, blah, blah. You know, next song is by this, you know? Yeah. No, a hundred percent brother for sure. Bobby Dreyer, let's bring you back in here, man. Why don't you kick off this next segment? So I, I, I got to love the fact that you're, you guys are all kiss fans. Well, the, we have the biggest freaking kiss fan on here, Matt Porter, who runs the kiss room. And uh, so uh, I, the last video you guys did very much emulated a lot of poison, the eighties glam, but definitely a lot of the, uh, the fun part of kiss. So, you know, like you guys throw in, how'd you guys pull all that together? Uh, is that the pink halo video? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, Sam, uh, me and Sam wrote the song and Sam had an idea when he was going to make the video uh, about the, the glitter and stuff and all, you know, like, and it was supposed to be like a tongue and cheek thing about drugs. It's not really drugs. It's glitter. And so we all, he had the. Oh, really? The oh, scripted God, part down. Yeah. <laughs> that whole fucking thing of glitter. Remember it was the eighties. So, you know, come on. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so Sam had this idea and we said, yeah, that sounds cool. We'll do it. And then uh, we rented out this, uh, this bar and this and had a bunch of lights and smoke machines and uh just kept playing the song and we just kept having fun and that's kind of it got a little over the top which is cool but uh basically when we play that's what we like to do we like to have fun and you know make fun of each other and have you know it is it reminded me of kiss without the makeup at that night that time frame you know it was a whole you know vinnie moore uh kind of i mean uh, uh vinnie vinson a little bit of uh mark saint uh john right in there but you guys did so who i gotta ask before i jump out and throw it up who was the the chick in the video because angel that wants to know how bigger boobs were <laughs> <laughs> it, that is, believe it or not that is i didn't meet her till the video and she was a comedian or or uh and so she, he, Sam said, Hey, you want to be in a video? She's like, yeah. And so him, him and Jimmy were just all just hitting on her all night long. And I'm just like, ain't going nowhere, bro. I can see right now what's the writing on the wall. I think she plays for the other team. If you know what I'm saying. And they're like, no, no, no. Hey, you know, a little fish on the lips never hurt. Yeah. That's what I, no, that's what I it does. So I'm like, we look like girls. It's not a big deal. So, but yeah, she was cool. I, and I can't remember her name. I hate to say it. Sam would remember. Cause he was, he talked to her way more than I did, but she did a really good job. And she was just a comedian and came in that day and we said, hey, here's what we're doing. And we walked around downtown Omaha on a Friday night and was walking up and down the alleys and filming them some of that stuff. 
It's a good time. A great fun video. You know what it reminded? It, it reminded me of a lot of the early crew video. It, it very had a lot of the crew elements in it at that point. The girls, 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 you know, wild side. It had those kind of, you know. And I think we got it with all the PC shit and everything that's been going on. We kind of got away from that. And people just don't know how to laugh over dumb shit. Agreed. Really? Agreed. No, a hundred percent, man, for sure. So, and it's a fantastic video and that's the thing you can, you can tell it's about having a good time. And that's the thing that always drew me to the midnight devils is it's, it's just, it's such a party, dude. Oh, thanks, man. I, we, you know, the, you know, there's a, there, every every band has a certain like niche or whatever that they they fit into, and uh, we didn't want to really be. Uh, you know, we're not like Queensrÿche or nothing like that. We don't write deep thinking songs, and you know, and <laughs> God bless Queensrÿche, they're an amazing band. I just I just don't like thinking that much during a song. I'm like right. this. I'm like, oh, you want to bang a few chicks and and have some <laughs> beers and have fun? That's fucking straightforward, and I like it. Just having a good time, you know. Absolutely. So, I, I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> you can't remember it. That's what you're trying to say. No, I'm getting. No, he's uh, Bob. Bobby is our <laughs> resident uh, place for the other team. I'm on the other team. <laughs> <laughs> nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. It's 2021. <laughs> like, <laughs> <woo! No>. <laughs> <laughs> so, just a shout out to the fans, right quick, guys. Don't be shy. Throw those comments, those love, all those questions into the comments for when we get to Angel. But it is time for that. Beautifully bright smiled Psycho Steve to bring him in. Oh, thank you, sir. So the question <laughs> is, as far as in uh, growing up as a musician, was guitar your first instrument? Yeah, uh, I I tried. I my brother had a guitar, and okay. he had a, a a like electric blue harmony strat looking thing, and I was like, oh, now I wasn't supposed to touch it because I was a little brother, you know, I was. He's like, this is my guitar. Don't touch it. And uh, he was taking lessons with this this guy, this old timer guy that was like teaching him. Like Michael rode the boat ashore and shit like that, you know, and I was like, oh, this is lame, man. And so I, <laughs> I picked up the guitar a few times and figured out a couple Elvis things, you know, and I'm like, hey, I can do this. And he's like, who taught you that? How do you know how to do that? And I'm like, I just I could hear it, you know, and he was just like, what the hell? And so he's like, well, quit touching my guitar. And then he'd like lock it away so I couldn't have it. So I went and uh, swept out of st- this machine shop for a whole summer, and I bought a guitar and an amp. And you then, still have the guitar? What's, I do. It's actually it's my song learning guitar. <laughs> oh, it was right. a Gibson, or excuse me, it was an Ibanez Destroyer. It's like, I mean, you want me to grab it? It's right over there, man. I can't yeah. Like, yeah. The good, or, and look, we can play guitar porn all night here. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, boy, here we go. It is still here. <laughs> I still have it. It's... Ooh. The reason I had to have it, go Paul Stanley played a white one on the destroyer. No, no, you car ever. Played one, and that's the one fucking Eddie hacked up for uh, women and children first. That's exactly what it is. And I, I almost did it a few years ago, and I'm like, man, don't do it. It's your first guitar. Yeah. But it's, it's like I learned songs on this one. Like I, when I'm playing around the house or goofing around, it doesn't have a Floyd Rose or nothing, but it, it's easy to tune real quick. That like if you're playing along with. Something's an eerie flat, you know. So, I, uh, yeah, I've had the, I, but I, I don't have the amp anymore because I, I, I think my brother has it, but I got the guitar. What nice. year is that? This is a '76. Yes, that's awesome. it. That's the one Ace fucking had the Karina. Yeah. Hell yeah! Oh no, love it. Oh, trust me, this is this I is the show. Wood. This I is the show wood. that's all about I guitar. Old wood. Oh yeah. Dude, this show is all about guitar porn, so we're definitely going to be getting into that. But Angel, let me kick it down to you, brother, bringing you in for the first time. Any questions from the fans and questions from you? Sure. Um, Candy Burton wants to know, you're a Kiss fan. What are your favorite Kiss albums and songs? That's almost an impossible answer. Uh, Kiss is probably... I, I basically, when I was growing up, I wore out Alive, learning songs on it. It was the first album I ever bought with my own money, was Kiss Alive. And then um, my favorite song on that album, ooh, um, 
I love the guitar solo in track number three, Got to Choose. That was probably my favorite ace solo off that album. And I love uh, my favorite, uh, favorite song song would probably be Let Me Go Rock and Roll. I do love that one. And then my second favorite Kiss album would be Alive 2, which of course had the cool guitar. So, you know, that's all the newer stuff, Detroit Rock City and King of the Nighttime World. So probably King of the Nighttime World. I love that one. That was probably one of my faves. That was my first Kiss album. Well, I too. Yeah, and any way you want it. That's a hooked. great one. Even though it's not an original, that's what got me hooked. That that's that's a that's that whole fourth side of of like non live material. Yeah, I liked every single song. Even and then she kissed me. I loved all of them. I'm like, these are great songs. I don't care what anybody says because it's <laughs> you know they're stepping out of the box a little bit, and so it was cool. Right. You know. Absolutely. For sure. Uh, Brian, here's another tough question. Um, Brian wants to know what's your favorite Kiss or the Beatles? <laughs> uh, he wants to know if I if I like the Kiss or the Beatles. No, um, what's your favorite Elvis or the Beatles? Oh, well, as a performer, Elvis was the king. Period. He did not write like the Beatles. I mean, I love the Beatles. Uh, uh, I actually get mad when people do Beatles covers. I don't like it very much. Although Chip is doing it, his sounds pretty cool because he's modernized them. Yeah. I just don't like, I think there was a band that did like a techno version of Eleanor Rigby. And I think I threw the boombox out of the car because I was so fucking mad. I'm like, who would ruin a fucking song like this? And so my friend's like, that was my boombox. I'm like, I don't care. It was, it was terrible, you know. I was driving around an old Ford van that didn't have a radio, so we had a boombox in between the seats, and he put this tape in. And looking back, I probably should have threw the tape out, but I threw the boombox out because it was a god-awful, horrific version of Eleanor Rigby. So I think Elvis, as a performer, was like, the that's the blueprint. That's how you did it. But then the Beatles came along and did all the harmonies and all their material. And Elvis was in a, like a real prolific writer, like, Lennon and McCartney, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I, I love the magic and the chemistry of the Beatles. I love Elvis as a performer. I just, uh, some of them Beatle albums are untouchable, you know, just like some of them Elvis songs are untouchable. But seeing him, like, I would have loved to see either one of them live, obviously. But I would think that Elvis would have been the better show because he's, you know, Elvis, you know. He had the shtick with the fucking towels and kissing the girls during the songs and all that. And that's pretty epic, you know. Absolutely. For sure. And he also wants to know your favorite sports teams. Sports teams. Uh, I'm not much of a sports guy. Um, is the Cleveland Steamers a team? Because I'd say that if that was the Cleveland. That's just a joke, man. Um, I love uh, it. <laughs> uh, actually, Hello, Cleveland. <laughs> Exactly. You got to understand what a Cleveland steamer is. <laughs> yeah, I'm not much of a sports guy. Uh, I don't pay attention to sports much. Um, usually, the only thing I noticed about sports was uh, when we play a club on Saturday, there's college football on or something. It fucking ruined the show if they're like you're playing at Iowa and they're and their fucking hometown team lost. You're like everybody's all bummed out, right? You know. Other than that, I don't, I don't really follow sports that much. So uh, if I was to pick a team. Based on colors, I would say the Minnesota Vikings because I like their the little white thing on their hat on their helmet rather, and they're, and they're purple and white. That's nice. it. Damn, and I thought I was the gay guy. <laughs> <laughs> no. There's plenty of room in that boat. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> oh, dude, I, in, in, in a year, in a year and a half of this show and almost seventy episodes, I think you're the first person to throw out a Deuce Bigelow reference. <laughs> <laughs> I would contest to that. That's awesome. Angel, <laughs> right back to you, bro. <clears throat> uh, my question is, uh, when you're when you're out on the road, what's your what's your go to guitar? Um, it's uh, my go my, my guitar I play that you see. It's in that video. It's a, a Charvel Custom Shop Star from uh, 2004 that I've had a couple things done to. Um, I have the pickup rewrapped by Bare Knuckle and then I've got a uh, I have the big block Floyd Rose with the 
the you know the big giant brass block you put on it. I have I have the biggest one you can buy for that, and then I have the who does your block? <laughs> who does my? Uh, it's not HR, but uh, it's a place called uh, Fu Upgrades, or it's like Fu Upgrades. Tone, my buddy Adam Reaver. Yes, that's exactly who you it is. Love Adam. Yeah. Big kudos, dude. Actually, I, I, dude I, I bought. I, uh, I've got a couple of his guitar bodies laying around too. Some of them, the new boogie bodies, one of the stars, and uh, a couple strats. And uh, I just, I just sent one off to be painted. In fact, nice. That's awesome. I need Bobby to come back real quick because I'm about to yell at him in a good way. <laughs> he didn't pass out this time. So don't not this time. <laughs> no. He better not pass I'll br- out. I'll bring, I'll, bring, I'll bring him back in in just in, in just a second. So, Sniper, I want to take this kind of a, um, a starting off sad, but into a positivity type um, uh, question. So, back in October, as rock and metal people, we all lost somebody very near and dear to us. Yes. So, yeah. right after that happened, we had an opening on our show, and we decided, you know what? Screw it. We're not, we've got plenty of contacts. I'm sure there's people that we could call instead of hitting up some, what are some of our various mates for interviews, we decided to hold a tribute show that following Wednesday after that news. And of course we are talking about the late, not even late, great, the late iconic Eddie Van Halen as a guitar player. We got to talk to you about Eddie Van Halen, bro. And like, your fondest memories, what he may or may not have contributed to you as a performer or as a guitar player, or just fond memories, brother. And there, Bobby's all over it. So let's steer this into some just good old fashioned Eddie Van Halen talk, Sniper. It's all you, bro. Okay. Uh, my first recollection of EVH, obviously, is uh, and, and, and when I saw him live for the very first time, was I just was so blown away by how it seems effortless for him to play the most amazing fucking guitar parts ever. He's, I was, it was in Lincoln, Nebraska. And it was the Van Halen two tour. And he literally was playing, he was playing the Bumblebee, the black and yellow guitar. And I remember he was walking across the stage, smiling, tapping up this, this, the intro to women in love. And I was just like, so blown away. I was like, he's smiling, not even looking at what he's playing. And he played it like, you know, his Ed, he just fucking a grin on his face. And I was just like so blown away that he could fucking do that. Here, I'm just a little kid. I'm just this little kid watching, just going, oh my gosh. You know, and so, of course, everybody want, and everybody wanted to be Eddie Van Halen because he was the coolest dude ever. You know, you're like, whoa, he's playing guitar, smiling. He's cool. He had the cool striped guitars. I think the biggest thing for me was he would, he would, say things like fuck the rules if it sounds good it sounds good yeah. you know uh, the the yeah. modded guitars the modded the floyd roses the the hot pickups the cool paint jobs i mean he basically started that all you know and so just i don't think anybody can really put into words how huge of an influence on modern music he is or was uh I, I equate it to, he puts his initials on anything. It sells out. You know what I mean? Like guitar, like pedals or pickups or anything. Yeah. It, you know, it just, he was so iconic. And everybody that even dabbled at guitar wanted to be Eddie Van Halen at that time, you know. And, and he spawned this whole new breed of guitars. I just read an article two or three days ago how, about Steve Lukather saying how Eddie Van Halen hated the fact that he, that, his playing spawned this generation of like super shredder guitar players because ed was more about feeling blues bass you know and so i saw that interview too yeah it was it it was interesting what steve said and i was like it made sense to me because he the thing that made ed better than the shredders in my opinion was three minute song three three or four chords catchy it had a catchy chorus and it had a bit a bitching guitar solo and you know, it's like bars. That's it. it, it didn't ah, get- there it is. That's it. The fifty-one fifty. Yeah, that's amazing. No, a hundred percent, brother. Sniper, do you have any of the fifty-one fifty like amp heads or pedals? 
I, in fact, I do. I have, I hate to even tell you guys this. I carry, I have three of the, the hundred waters the the original, the dash threes yes. that I, that he used on the last tour. Then I have the, the new, I have two of the new uh, EL 34 models, the stealth models. And then of course uh, I got like five TVs of the 5150 variations. Blocks. And then uh, Here the original blocks. Yes. Yeah. And then I've got, I, 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 I bought a bunch from this. Uh, there's like these three guys that are going to college or in a band. And I bought like all their stuff from them. They're, they're selling their stuff out cheap. And I bought it all from them like over a, a three week period. So I've got like, I got like six yeah, cabinets and three heads and go back to their mom's basement. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's probably what they're doing right now. But uh, I've got some of his, uh, I've got like a, a, a flanger, the EVH flanger. And then like a, the, the cry baby or the EVH wah pedal, but uh, and I have a couple of the guitars, you know. But I have the the USA Art Series Charvels. I don't have any of the newer ones. I have all the older ones. So you know, the Bumblebee was uh, my favorite Strat style. The the guitar I love that he played the most was that they call it the Invasion Star, that black and white star that yeah. had the Dan Electro headstock. That yeah. was my favorite guitar he ever played. Oh, that's awesome, dude. And so it's like a follow up to this, because I think this is super duper cool or kind of to keep it in the Van Halen camp. Let's talk uh, for a second about Wolfie. He just got announced as the direct support for the Guns N' Roses tour. Um, as a Van Halen guy, uh, two, two questions. Um, have you are you familiar with Wolfie's music that he's been putting out with uh, Mammoth? What do you think of it? But also, what's your opinion of him? coming into Van Halen because it was kind of a weird situation for Michael to be gone and to Wolfie be in. Um, so what do you think about those two scenarios? Like Wolfie's music as a solo guy and him playing in Van Halen. Uh, his solo music. I was actually really, really surprised how good it was. And, and it sounded like, and I, I don't mean this as an insult, but that yeah. one song, the distance sounds like, Daughtry to me I'm like that's a good song and I was like wow I really good song and there's another video that I watch and I'm trying to remember the name of it where he's every he plays every part in the video and uh yeah. it's a great song what a and, great video at the end of it's kick ass I, you gotta yeah, watch the whole video the best thing about it to me is he's not trying to be his dad or copy his dad he's his own man and he he sounds good he's a talented musician for sure and talented singer and I was on the fence about him being in Van Halen at first. And I went and seen him. And I was really shocked at how good he was. And I was like, oh, he's a really good singer. I didn't realize. And he's a solid bass player. And I think one of the main reasons that uh, he was in the band was to keep an eye on his dad. I mean, he's like, Eddie could have never done a tour with Michael Anthony because he was having such issues with alcohol and stuff. And I think that uh, Wolfie kept an eye on him and I don't think Eddie wanted to let his son down. So he, he stayed on the straight and narrow as best he could. And, and thanks to Wolfie, we got like two or three more tours out of Van Halen and we got to see Eddie Van Halen. And I remember the last time I saw him, you know, Ed was on fucking fire. He was great. It was 2015, you know? And I had that feeling that night. I was telling Sam, me and Sam went to Kansas City to go see him. And I said, and right directly to the time, I go, this will probably be the last time I ever see Eddie Van Halen. He's like, no, nah, man. I'm like, yeah, I think so. I just, I just have a feeling, yeah, you know? That sounds about right. I, I caught them in Camden, New Jersey at uh, the Susquehanna Bank Center or BB or the B T Center or whatever it's called. Um, I, uh, I went to that and I saw Van Halen there. And uh, the only, cause I was just, soaking it all in the whole show the only song that i recorded a part of was hot for teacher teacher because it's always been my favorite song so i wanted, <laughs> to, so I wanted to take a little uh a little part of it home with me uh -huh. but uh but yeah no for sure dude so no that's cool man because I, I definitely knew you to be an evh guy so i was like we gotta talk some eddie on this episode 100 percent. yeah he's i went when i saw him in kansas city it was that they were playing all them outdoor shows and I, I had a different phone then and I fucking taped this whole solo and my phone died and this, and I could, and I could not recover that video. And I was oh. so fucking devastated. 
I have another video that someone sent me, a pop for teacher and another little bit I ain't talk about love, but I was just so crushed that I did not have that solo anymore. I was like, oh, and oh. stupid iPhone, you know, I mean, I was so mad. No, for sure, man. Just letting you down. But a person that won't let you down is I'm going to bring back in Bobby Dreyer. All right. So we're going to do a segment. And I started last week. And since you're a guitar player, it's going to be called How Good Do You Know Your Wood? Oh, shit. I know my personal wood pretty good, but. Are, are you sure? Because, you know, I get people coming up to me all the time going, dude, we love when you bring your shit out. But I'm like, look, we got these guitar players. I want to know. Wait, I want to know how good they know their wood. So I'm just going to show guitars, and I need to go, you to go, who's what? Oh, I know who that is. So the first one, hmm. it's a little bit, got some stars on the neck. Richie Sambora. I know that. Oh, all right. You're good. All right. <laughs> um, I'm going to show this. And if you can figure it out. Yeah, pretty... back. Damn. Oh, you just got me chubby with right it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to play. Wait a second. I know this is going to be a little hard. So... <laughs> I bet it is. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> shit. We're just going to point our wood at the fun. camera. This gentleman played with uh, uh, a thin white dude, and he played with two-thirds of a cat. <laughs> um, I'm going to say... Um, he was a young American. Well, that would be David Bowie, but uh, this guitar player. Oh, Earl which, oh shit! Mick Ronson? No. Oh. Earl Slick. Slicky. He got it. Yeah. Okay, where is that? The guitar I remember with Earl Slick was that pink Demarzio he had. That's what I remember for Earl Slick. And if you can't get this hey, one, really. You better fucking take those pictures off your wall. Damn. Yeah, that's the, that's the Budokan. All right. Wait a second. First year. Uh -oh. Steve Vai, a, a desert yellow jam. Damn. Is that what that is? Which one is it? I, I don't, you're not on the screen. I can't see it. First year. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a that's a that's a gem, a desert yellow gem. Yes. Bye. All right, <laughs> come on. And if a queen's gonna Brian show, May. damn, that's record times. <laughs> that that I would have been all over that too, man. That's, this is that, like Jeopardy. That, this is like this is like rock and roll Jeopardy. Oh yeah, that's red <laughs> special right there, dude. I love me some Queen for sure. Tony says that too. He loves him some Queen. I believe it. All right. Blues Saraceno. Yeah. You know. Hey, yo. No one would answer that one. Damn, you're better than me. Boy, you know what? <laughs> yeah, he played that with poison. All right. Now, now I'm going to get it. This is kind of like stump the homo. All right. It's Adrian Vandenberg. Oh. Damn. You know your shit. I'm going to pull one out of my ass right here because I pull a lot of things out of my ass. Uh, that's not going to be pretty be more gentle on you then. There's children watching you oh, pull yeah. guitars out of his ass. Oh, no. For all the kids that are watching, we are sorry. Oh, okay. I'm I know. say Paul Gilbert on that one? Damn! Yes, it does. And what year? Two, well, he broke that in 2004 on, in, a, in Arizona. So I'm going to say that's got to be early PB, like a 99? 94. 94. OU812. Oh, was that called the Wolfgang? Yes, it was the first. Well, it was the second Wolfgang. 
uh, after he left Music Man. Damn, Sniper, you're fucking, you blew me away. I, I got more shit here, but I ain't blowing my load tonight. So uh, maybe later, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I have around me. <laughs> nice. That was record times. That was. That, I, that, I mean, I'm like, damn, he knows his shit. Well, my favorite part was how fast he he knocked out the uh, Bra- uh, the Brian May one, especially because if anybody is or isn't familiar with Sam, he's got a massive Queen tattoo on his arm. <laughs> For sure. So I'm not surprised in the least. That you barely put it up on screen before it was like in May. <laughs> so I'm gonna bring Psycho Steve back in in just a second. But Angel, let's kick it down to you right quick, brother. How are the fans doing? Oh, awesome. They're really loving this new segment. <laughs> <clears throat> Those were some hard questions, and he knocked out, out of the ballpark. That's record time. And he's still trying to play. Last one. Come on. Well, it's the dude, that. Jason Becker. You're the man. All right, we're done. <laughs> Bobby Gibbs. Oh. Go ahead, Angel. Okay. <clears throat> but I do have one for later that helped. Well, two of them for later that he. I know he won't get. Put your wood away for now. <laughs> Tommy says that all the time. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry, Angel. <laughs> That's all right. I'm just speechless. <laughs> wow, let's write okay. that down. Dude, I, gar- I guarantee you that, like, Kim and Candy are watching right now, going, like, What is wrong with all of you? <laughs> no, just Bobby. Margaritas, <laughs> <laughs> what the hell do you want? <laughs> <laughs> it's like sugar and tequila. <laughs> okay, Go sit down okay there, Margaritaville. Angel, oh, reel us back in, dude. All right. Okay, I have a question from Tony. Uh, not the one that's Bobby's, but a different Tony. Uh, what's the metal scene, America or Europe? As far as like the metal scenes, like which one is your your preference? Um, I really like it seems like I like both a lot um, I feel like some of the better bands are coming out of Europe right now you know that's just that's just personal preference that's not saying there's some great American bands too I just uh, it seems like I don't know I like you know some of the bands I like right now are non-metal, so like like Blackberry Smoke and stuff like that. I you know, yeah. I think that Europe has a better appreciation of the music, sometimes better than America. You know, so I don't know. No problem. I, I'm undecided on that one. Sorry, buddy. No, it's okay. It's rock and roll. Yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of a tricky one because like I've heard that question before, like America versus Europe, and there's so many fantastic bands. When I get down to the nitty gritty, I always land on America because no matter what, I can't give up my Motley Crew and I can't give up my Kiss. Damn straight. It's true. Yeah. Angel, right back to you, brother. I have a question from Brian. He says, um, I know we share a love of Charvels. I think I mispronounced that, but I do that on every word just about. Uh, what's your favorite Wayne era Charvel and why? My favorite era, Charvel. Um, I, oh, I have a, right. yeah, I have a 1982 pink and black Charvel star strat head that's all original that I got. I bought it for a birthday present for myself and I played it at a couple shows and I'm like, this is just too damn valuable to take out. That's my favorite guitar of all time. That is like the neck is just unbelievable. I can't, I don't even want to bring it out of the, it sits in a like, I got the hardest case known to man for it. I put it in there and I, I get it about once a month and play it. Then I put it right back in because I don't want anything bad to happen to it. I just absolutely love it. Do you use it for studio at all or just strictly for some noodling? I, you know what I do with it? I, I, 
I tune it to E flat and I play the Van Halen records, to be honest with you. That's what I do with it. And right. it's got a Floyd in a, it's got like a Duncan, because it's all original, I don't want to mod it. If it had been modded already, I would put a different pickup in it and probably take it out. It's just too, I'm just, I can't, it's just too damn valuable to take out anymore, you know? Sure. Does it have a name? Pinky. <laughs> it's got the, it's got, it's like a Chevron. It's like, it's pink and black alternating stripes that, that come to a point like that on the body. It's really cool. I love nice. it. It's just uh, a friend of mine found it for me. He knew I love Charvel stars. And I, he's like, Hey, I can get it for you. And I'm like, I'm buying it. So I bought it. So, you know, that was probably like five years ago, six years ago. And it's, I took it out to a couple local shows where I could keep like positive control of it the whole time. But on a bus, I don't, I don't want to take it on a bus and get it all beat up and, you know, all fucking dinged up. It's, it's got some marks already from wear, but I don't want to snap the neck or anything. It's like the perfect neck. So I should record with it. And, but I was using my, I used my yellow star and one of chips guitars for the album that we're working on now. Nice. No, I was just going to get to um, Candy Burton's question. I was just laughing at her comment oh about boy. wood. <clears throat> okay, let me put on straight face again. Behave, Candy. I never have a straight face on. Okay. Ah! Was, she was kind of getting turned on about everybody turning their wood towards the camera. <laughs> oh, my. We don't want to have a we don't want to have a Dave. Yeah, moment. that just sounded so like uh, who was the guy from Star Trek? The one? Somebody got in trouble for that. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Just had an Elveson moment. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Oh, okay, continue. Sorry. <laughs> no, I just say that somebody got in trouble for doing that. What, guy? Pointing, pointing for pointing their wood towards the camera. So, Candy's question. Yes. Um, have you ever been... <laughs> I can never get to Candy's question. This happens every week. <laughs> All right. Deep breaths. Okay. Here. Let's go. Here we go. All right. Sorry about that. Center yourself. Go ahead. Um, have... <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been to, have you ever been starstruck at meeting anyone um there i said it believe it or not i i have met all my heroes except for a couple and la uh, it was it was 2019 uh a friend of mine ken coles he's brett michael's merch guy uh he knew the pyro guy for kiss and we went to Des Moines to see him and he, I didn't know at the time, but uh, I was a veteran and served in Iraq and Afghanistan. And he uh, made a call to his buddy and kiss loves veterans. And so they arranged a free meet and greet for me to meet kiss and get my picture taken with them. And I, I met Eddie Van Halen. I wasn't star truck. I met a lot of people. I was Star Trek, but kiss. I was just, I, I didn't even know what to say. I was just like, ah, bah, 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 bah. I didn't know what to say. With Kiss. I don't care who the fuck you are. It, it's still our band. Yeah. yeah. The thing is, I'm like 5'8", and they're like seven foot tall with their shoes on, and I was standing next to Gene, and they took the picture. Gene put his hand on my shoulder, and I'm like, this motherfucker is tall. Holy shit. <laughs> and I was just, I've, I've got the big, I'm just like, oh, I'm being kissed. I've been waiting. I think part of that was I've been waiting my whole life to meet him. And, and you know, and I thought it was, I, I don't I don't know, man. It was pretty fucking crazy. I was, I was in heaven the whole show. That's when they had that painter opening for him. And I missed all that because I was downstairs meeting Kiss. And they came up and I was still shaking from meeting Kiss. And I, I normally, normally I'm just like, you know, they poop just like we do. Nothing special, but it was Kiss, man. And I, since I was like 10 years old, I've loved Kiss. So, you know, it's, it's one of them things. I, I'm a Kiss fan. I don't care what incarnation of the band it is. Everybody can, I'm going, look, I love Tommy. I love Eric. I love, look, that band will always have a special spot in my heart. And all of us here on the Metal Summit and everything, it, it's, uh, you know, look, there are Beatles. 
for sure for sure yeah absolutely yeah i i can't even I, i've met ace i've never met peter but i've met ace i've met paul gene tommy and eric but you know just just i i i was just so shell-shocked and so overwhelmed that gene simmons put his hand on my shoulder and because you're not allowed to touch him. I don't know if you know that. They, you can't touch them. They, they're real germaphobes. And you can't touch them unless you're a chick, probably. But uh, <laughs> kids. so he put his hand on my shoulder, and I was like, holy shit. Because they tell you right outside, don't touch them. You know? Right when you go in, they're like, don't touch them. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know? It's a cattle call. They get you through there pretty fast. But you know what? Didn't care. It was Kiss, man. The greatest band in the world. You know what I mean? So. Oh, yeah. For sure. Angel, right back to you, brother. Well, Brian wants to know, do you have any notable punk influences? Uh, one, of, one of my favorite bands from the 80s is Killing Joke. Nice. And I also like Lords of the New Church. Good. Um, yeah. In fact, I was, I was going down a rabbit hole on YouTube one time, and I found a cover of David Hasselhoff singing Open Your Eyes to the Lives Right in Front of You. And I sent that to Jimmy, our drummer. He's a giant uh, Lords of the New Church. And he, he was just like, this is the greatest video ever. It was, <laughs> that's it. That's, I also like the Ramones. I also like, uh, I liked Debo when they came out too, for some reason. I don't sure. know why. They were just different. I don't know if you really could. The cars weren't punk, but they were new wave. And I like them too. I like a lot of that stuff. It's actually funny because uh, uh, Gary's doing like an industrial metal thing now. Yeah, Gary it's Newman's fantastic. Shit. I agree. It's really, really cool. Go ahead, Angel. Keep rolling, buddy. Um, my question is, during during time of, of COVID, um, as a musician, um, how did you, how did you um, keep yourself busy? Were you still writing a lot, maybe more than usual, uh, practicing more, coming up with ideas for for what to do on tour? Yeah, uh, what happened was uh, I would do a ritual where I would, um, I would say, I'm going to learn this whole album real quick. And I'd sit down and learn a whole album and play with it for a week or, you know, five days or whatever. And then um, I talked to Sam and I said, hey, let's take advantage of this downtime. We can't play. Let's write. So we wrote 11 songs real quick. He'd come over on uh, like a Saturday and uh, we'd sit in my basement and, and we'd write songs and we'd have a little tap thing on the iPhone to keep time. And we'd write, you know, we'd play songs. Then we'd record it on one iPhone and, and use the drum machine off the other iPhone. And, and that's how we got the ideas together. And we hired a studio drummer to... Uh, do some rough demos with us, which we sent to Jimmy. And that's what we did during COVID basically. And, uh, you know, I sold a lot of plasma and, uh, to get by. And, uh, I made a conscious decision. I was like going to start selling off stuff I didn't use or wouldn't use in, at a show ever. So I started basically parting my guitars out that I wouldn't play anymore and selling them on eBay, trying to make some bucks to get by, you know, that's oh, what I did. Yeah. Sam kind of did the same thing. He was working. We both like got these obscure, weird things to just hey, do to get money. Here. So what are you guys doing? How far along are you guys with the album right now? Uh, everything's done except for a few guitar solos. And I'm traveling to Chicago on Friday to finish them this weekend with Chip and uh, Robbie, the engineer. So that part of the, uh, everything's done except for the guitar solos on a few songs. So what do you got to do? Mixing, mastering left? Yeah. The art, uh, the artwork, I, I saw the, uh, the mock-up of the album cover and there's two different titles were thrown around. And, uh, I think the album will stay, the, the, the artwork will stay the same, but the name might change, but they, we haven't, usually it's a fist fight and whoever's the last man standing gets to pick the album name. So nice. I, you know, I'm probably going to lose again, but you know, there's, it, there's two good titles and I like, I like mine better, but they like theirs better. I so. was sword fighting for Jesus, but you know, 
When you say sword fight, it reminds you of something else because you, I'm thinking that you're at the fucking trough at the fucking concert venue and you're sword fighting. That's what I'm thinking of. Well, I, I but, mean, if, but if you put that out there, everybody go, I don't understand the title. I'm going, really? <laughs> I would have, it would be like so the anti striper album cover. <laughs> Dude, if I had a say, if I had a say in it just based off this episode, it would be called The Midnight Devils, Grab Your Wood and Scream. There you go. That's a great album title. If Sam's watching this, just probably consider that one, Sam. I'd send it, send it to him for all I care, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it fits right up your alley, personally. It really does. It sounds like something we'd say, too. Exactly. I um, would 100%. Here, and, and I do mixing and mastering. To cover your bones, I'll do it pro bono. Help you guys out if you want. So I'm just throwing that out. Thank you. I appreciate it. I, if Sam's watching this, Sam, Bobby D said he'd help us. Yeah. I, I, I do a lot with David Ivory. David produced Hail, Hailstorm, uh, Silvertide, everything. So look, uh, yeah. Right on. Thank but, you. You, you know, look, I, I'm here to help you guys out. Get the I shit appreciate out. it. Thank you. Sword fight for Jesus. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah, uh, so I, here I'm gonna the striper cover. <laughs> White and black attack. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna kick it down to Psycho Steve to close out this segment before we go to break. Psycho Steve, it's all you, brother. Okay, so we did definitely talk and touch based about uh, Kiss, and you said that you know before we started our show, you said Love Gun was your first tour, and yeah. you've seen them through the years. Did you ever get a chance to see them with Vinny, and did you ever get to see them with Mark? Uh, any other inkling besides like all right? So you got to see the core four, the original yeah. lineup, mm -hmm. and then did you just skip? all of the non-makeup era? No, I, I saw them several times with Bruce Kulick, obviously. Okay. Uh, they, they, well, there was that short window right there where they um, Bruce was in the band and they were, do, they were doing the non-makeup stuff. I never saw Vinny Vincent. I never saw uh, Mark, but I saw okay. Bruce Kulick with them two or three times. And then they did that that 96 where they got back to the makeup thing. Right, reunion. and that that and I saw they sold out two nights in Omaha, and I saw both nights here, and then it just seems like they've been in makeup ever since then. So um, I saw right. the uh, was it Revenge, I think, and then uh, Paul was cussing a lot back then. So I and I want to say it was Revenge. I think it was that tour. Yeah, yeah. He was saying that he was dropping the f bomb almost every. I was like, dang, man. He's trying to be hip with the kids, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> right. That's awesome, okay. for sure. Hell yeah. So, uh, Sniper, hang tight with us, brother. We're just going to take a little break real quick because we always want to show some appreciation to some of our partners and sponsors of the show that allow us to put on such a cool show and, you know, have guys like yourself get to talk shop and guitars and Van Halen and music with us. So just hang right. tight, fans. We love you guys. Thank you so much, as always, for tuning in. So we always want to take a second to thank Bradley from BLE. Thank you so much for everything you've done for the Metal Summit, dude. We love getting involved with these shows, coming down and checking things out. We're going to have a couple of us, as always, on Sunday for the show that you're doing with Ted Poley. So Bradley, Angie, Dawn, thank you guys so much for everything you do. Uh, guys, Again, guys, State Theater, Haver Haverty Grace, Maryland, this Sunday for Ted Poley. We also want to thank Saren Cadaver from Twisted Vines, her horror decor company. She does fantastic works, everything from like creepy voodoo dolls to Ouija boards to all kinds of stuff to hang around your house. She's fantastic and very supportive. So Saren, we thank you so much as well, love. Uh, we also always want to thank Mark and Janet from Rock and Horror Apparel. They're TMS alumni. They had a fantastic episode. They've, they've done clothing for members of the Metal Summit. And we really appreciate them being a part of us as well. And we definitely want to thank David Rosenfeld, guitar player for Tonal Crush, Rosenfeld and Associates, njsmile.com that keeps that glitter in Steve's face. Um, thanks so much, David. We appreciate you as well being involved with us. 
And we also like to thank John from Bubby's Beanery. Thank you so much, brother. We appreciate you getting involved with us as well. Um, and thank you so much to everybody else. Anybody who wants to be involved with us, hit us up. We've got definitely different tiers that you could sign up for, and we'd be happy to have you guys involved with us. Everybody sit tight. We're going to run a quick commercial break for about a minute or so, and we will be right back with more of the Metal Summit with Sniper from the Midnight Devils. Jesus. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much to all of our sponsors again. And thank you so much, TMS fans, Metal Summoners. We love you guys so much. We are back with Sniper from the Midnight Devils. Thank you so much again for spending your evening with us, man. And so I want to pull it back to the Midnight Devils, to the stuff that you're doing with the new music, because you've mentioned the name Chip a couple of times. And for anybody who's not familiar with that is TMS alumnus Chip Zanuck from Enough Zanuck. How exactly did that come about, bro? Uh, well, Jimmy Mess is actually pretty good friends with Chip. And uh, we, were, we were doing some shows with them. Uh, we did, uh, right when we first got, we got Jimmy in the band. We were doing shows and Chip needed us to do some opening slots for him. And we did. And we actually became pretty good friends with Tori, the guitar player, and Tony, the other guitar player, and Benjamin. So uh, uh, we actually got along really well. And uh, Tori and Tony were like, uh, are those 5150 amps? I go, yeah, yeah. They go, yeah, Chip, get these guys to uh, open for us. They love my amps so much. They were like, "We because I carry two of them with me. One is a backup and one is a main. And so we ended up doing a lot of shows with them. And then when we decided to do the record, we were going to have the first one. We were going to have Chip do it, but it, it just wasn't feasibly possible at the time. So this time around, the first thing he said, you know, Chip's like, come to my house or my studio. We'll do it all, you know. And I remember being at his house and I was exhausted. We were talking about the record. And Chip's like, bro, bro, we're going to do the great rock and roll record, bro. And he's like, and we're watching this TV show. Called, I, don't, I don't know why he like has, he likes to talk with the TV on, but there's no sound, you know? So you're like, you look up, there's a show called Drain the Ocean or something, you know, it's like National Geographic. And he's like, I love these shows. <laughs> you're like, he's like the funniest <laughs> dude. And so me and Sam have been going to, we, we, the three of us did the drum tracks and then, uh, I can't, I went and then he mixed the, uh, the engineer 
you know, they got all, they sync them all up and do all that crazy shit with the click track and all that. And uh, then I, I came and played. And then Sam and, and Chip did the vocals and the bass and all that. Now I got to go back and do solos. And uh, Chip is a interesting fella, but he's, he's very like uh, creative and very smart and very uh, literally probably one of the nicest guys I've ever met in the business. Literally most, a lot of guys are uh, not as genuine as Sam. And, and so he's very genuine and very, he's, he's just a fucking good guy, man. He really is. I remember we were working hard. Me and the engineer were in the guitar room and we we're just working hard and he waits for us to stop. And he opens the door. And he's like, I brought some Chinese food for you guys. <laughs> we're like, champ, we're working. He's like, you gotta eat. You gotta eat, bro. <laughs> so we took like 20 minutes and ate real quick. He's like, pretty good, huh? And we're like, yeah. Thanks, Chip. And he's like, there's more in there if you want it. And I'm like, no, nah, we just gotta, we wanna keep working. He's like, sounds good, man. Then he'll, he'll just sit out there and listen. And if he doesn't like some or something, he'll, he'll wait for us to stop and come in. He's like, what about if you went dirt, 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 dirt right there? How about that? Do that in F sharp. Dirt, 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 dirt. Try that, okay? And so I was doing that and he's like, okay, that sounds great, bro. We'll add that in. I'm like, okay. You know, and he's just, he's a good dude, man. I really like him. I, I wasn't sure what to think at first, the first time I met him, because he was, it was an alley in uh, Omaha. He was doing a show with bullet boys and enough's enough and another band. And I was just kind of, that's when I was first introduced to him by Jimmy. And I wasn't sure what to think. Cause he was kind of, he was, I was just kind of standing back, but he's a cool dude. I really oh, like that him. Was that was the Jack Bullet Russell's Boys Enough's White. Enough Great White Tour, the Jack Russell's Great White Tour, I think. Yep, yep. I think so. Nice. Now here's the here's one here's here's a follow up to that. Did he bring you guys Chinese food because he really wanted you guys to eat, or was it because you were turning the studio green? <laughs> you know, it was. You know what? He had to. Yeah, it was because the studio was turning green. That's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And then the fun follow up when he when you work with him and he's producing the records, is he wearing the chip glasses? Yes, of course. It's what's so funny. What's so funny to me is. Like. We'll open the door and I'll walk out and and we're listening to the playback because I don't like uh, the speakers are too loud. I like to come out and listen to him like, you know, and so we're listening to it. And Chip would be like on his phone and they go like, that sounds great. And keep going, you know, and he's he's doing business on the phone and or he'll say like, uh, let's chop that note right there and just, you know, right. I'm like, OK, run one more time and or he'll have Robbie. He'll say, Robbie, just chop that note right there. Don't, I don't want to just make it a staccato note. And it's, he's like multitasking all at one time, like doing six things at once. Nice. And, but he'll he'll look up over his phone and he'll say. Is that an F sharp? You're like, yeah. He's like, why don't you end that in A? like uh all right you know that's the way he's funny dude you know just just hilarious yeah but he's got an ear he's such you know, he does articulate guy and you know he and donnie fuck yeah I for sure back together so bad it would be you would think you know they were such an incredible force for just a few short years there when they were together you know they wrote such great songs you know i yeah it would be something yeah we're, we're all sure. enough's enough fans and we love every I I incarnation of the band but the two of those guys were the lennon and mccartney of that period right, right exactly yeah they were the heart and soul they wrote you know sex you know very much like doug and ty and you know jerry you know so yeah it's they had, they had, I mean, you, when you go to the studio, he has all that stuff, all the paraphernalia on the walls and everything, you know, all the, the, the show lists and pictures. And it's, 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 it's fucking great. You're like, wow, this is, this is from when? Holy shit, you know, and it's. I, I ran into those guys at the Bulldog in Amsterdam during when they were doing the Cannabis Cup. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to go into it. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand. I probably still have a contact on. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, absolutely, man. So, um, for the fans that um are now curious, since we've been talking about uh new um TMD music, 
Do you guys have a rough plan for when you're planning to get the new record out? I know you still have some I's to dot, T's to cross and stuff like that, but do you have a rough plan? Cause we're still, you know, we're about halfway through this year. So what's the new record release date looking at? We we're, we're shooting for September, October. Nice. You know, um, and that's a coincide with some things oh, I can't talk about release. right now. Wink, wink, nod, nod. <laughs> There's a few things I can't talk about that were, I was told were off limits until the, the contracts are signed. Sure. Uh, but we wanted, we're going to try to, the plan was to get the record released by September, October and have a video uh, for one of the songs on it. And start, so we're starting something new in October and November, but I can't talk about it. But uh, so that was the plan. And a lot of it depends how it goes the next like week or two with, uh, the guitar solos and stuff, but I'm hoping to bust them all out on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So, you know, gotcha, brother. Are you guys, and for the upcoming M pre party that we've already talked about that you guys will be playing down here in Maryland in Hanover at Cancun Cantina, the day right before the start of the M three festival, are you planning to play any new songs off the upcoming record? Have yes. any live mute and any live shows that you've had, have you already started to play some of those songs? Uh, I can tell you, we have played. We played uh, the Wolf Fest in Denver. Oh, uh, was that April? I think April or May. I can't remember. Uh, but and we we did like a four date run. And I said, hey, I'll, I'll just, the name of the song is called Highway sixty nine. And I'm like, this episode is on tonight, you know? six nine, dude. Yeah. Yes. My, you know, what's wrong with that? It's perfect, right? Oh, yeah. So we were playing it, and, it, and it's, 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 it's a, it's a I, I like it, so it's cool, you know. We played it, got a good response from the crowd, and so we were going to play it. We're going to play it at, uh, at the Cancun uh, Cantina and uh, probably every show forward, and probably play a couple more, you know. Nice. That's awesome, brother, for sure. All right, Bobby. You've been waiting on this because you just cannot, hold on, hold on a second, brother, because you just cannot accept defeat. You really want to continue this. So we're going to kick it back to you to see if you can finally get Sniper. I'm going to kill a shubber. So Sniper, if you are a guitar player, I'm going to give you a little hint on this one. His drummer was rock solid. Um, Mark Slaughter. No, his drummer was rock solid and his counterparts had beautiful blonde hair. Oh, Lita Ford then. No. Is it, is it Nelson? Close. Yes, it is Nelson. But, you know, there's two Z's in his name. Neil Zaza? Yeah. Okay. Nice. All right. You know what? That's a that's a that's kind of a, a plainer one for me to look at. I'm like, yeah, okay. No, no, but it's Neil. My buddy, he did my first two albums. All right, we talked about this guy earlier. And that's uh, one of Mark, that's that's one of uh no, a few upgrade guitars. It's one of mine. <laughs> well, the color is definitely right. I like the color for sure. A little, uh, put it this way. He, he does it. He's not a well-known guitarist, but he will tell you to go fuck off. <laughs> uh. Adam Reaver. These are Adam's new guitars. Yeah, I knew that because I've seen them on I've seen them on the uh, on the website. So this but, is number uh, three. Uh, Steve Brown's got number two. Oh and, yeah, from Trickster, sure. And Tracy Gunn's got number one. So oh right on. So Bobby, for the record, dude, I got to throw this out right quick. I'm putting you personally responsible and personally in charge of getting Adam Revert as a sponsor of this show. You whore that dude out every week, and we love him, dude. We need to get that motherfucker involved. He had his place for Tony's birthday next Tuesday at his mom. 
Adam Reaver's mom owns the oldest Italian restaurant in Philadelphia, Dante and Luigi. Again, next Wednesday, everybody grab your cock. Mark Hudson will be here. He, I'm, no holds bar. It, look, if you're offended now, <laughs> tune in next Wednesday because you're going to hear things that are going <laughs> to I got bitch slapped by him more times than anything else. Sniper, if you want to see a guy, if you want a guy to produce your album and pimp you, oh, Mark is the guy. Amazing artist. Work with Ozzy, Aerosmith, blah, blah, blah. You know, the list goes on and on from, it was Ringo's producer for 11 fucking albums. But next week is going to be the shit. I want everybody to chime in and just break Mark's balls. He will whiplash you faster than anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. And again, awesome. free concert, Doylestown, June 23rd. The Kids Castle, Central Park. Mark doing Mulholland Drive with Gary, uh, uh, artist Gary Burr. And uh, they're doing everything from that whole period. So, and Mark's a trip, so... Tune in next Wednesday, 23rd in Doylestown, PA, free concert. Right on, man, for sure. Very cool. And and Sniper, look, dude, you, you, and I, I'd love to have you come out. Dude, you and I would sit here and go, oh, okay. <laughs> hey, hey, could I, I want to, I want to try to stump you now, okay? This is an easy one. Well, that's that's fair. an easy one. No, that's fair. Oh, oh, is that a, wait, let me get the neck. So, so far, I'm looking at an, uh, oh, is that a, uh, uh, da, 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 loudness? Come on. Yeah, oh, <coughs> a Kurosaka song guitar. guitar. That's, that's Kurosaka's guitar, man. Yes, I'm yeah. hearing rock and roll. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so first, fucking they were supposed to play M3 and couldn't get over here. Yeah, that's. I've tried to see them like three times. They always have problems with their visas yeah, or they something. Played, There's always something. They played M3 in 2012, and I saw them. And then they've been booked for M3 like four times since and haven't been able to make it for visas reasons. Same with the Monsters of Rock Cruise. I was talking to Brad Lee about that. Like, they can just never seem to get that shit locked in for loudness. It's frustrating, man, because those guys are fantastic. You just say yeah, I love them. Man. I'm sorry. <laughs> Bad Bobby. <laughs> so let's uh, let's kick it down to Angel, brother. Angel, let's bring you back in, my good dude. Any questions from the Metal Summoners? Oh, just checking, checking, checking. Totes, bro. Dude, like I said, they're just having a good time uh, with the show. Um, that's my, my question is... Um, and this is just like a present day um, about what you're going through with the, with coming up with the guitar solos. Um, do you ever come up with a guitar solo and kind of go back and think, you know, I should have done it different or, or, um, or, or done it better? Well, um, cause I know we don't, cause I know we don't talk too much about guitar solos nowadays. Yeah. But I the, still th love the, thing, the, <laughs> the thing is, is that, uh, you always think you can do better. You always think you can do better. And then at, at some point you're just, if you keep pushing and pushing, 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 it just gets worse and worse and worse. And so I know those guys that are perfectionists out there. They're, they, they like, they'll do a thousand takes. And I am more of the Frank Zappa, Eddie Van Halen man, mindset where you're like, you do like two or three and you're like, that's, those are pretty good. And then you pick the best of the three. If you overplay it, it just becomes cookie cutter and becomes robotic and monotonous. And I don't, and I, I think it loses its feel and the spontaneity is gone. So uh, I, I run up, what I've done in the past is I'll run at a solo a couple, two, three times. If I'm not feeling it, I'm like, move on to the next song. I, I don't, I'll come back. But sometimes I have one, one thing I do is I, like when we, we, we demo the songs, I kind of have ideas like what I think I'm going to do. And I'll kind of noodle around with that a little bit. And so I have like a little bit of an idea of what I'm going in to do, like a solo for Highway 69. I already kind of had it worked out what I'm going to do. And I'm going to go here, 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 and end it with this, and then do that, and then pick slide, and blah, blah, blah. So that's what I do. 
And every recording I've ever made, I always find something that I'm like, oh, I wish I would have done this better. Or I wish I, wish I would have hit this instead. But like I said, the more you keep messing with it, the worse it sounds, you know. I'd rather be, I'd rather have like a raw vibe. I'm not, I don't want to be polished like Boston or Queens Rack or nothing like that. I like it more raw, you know. So if, so I like it to feel, you know. Talking about solos and, and looking at your backdrop right there. What is that Kiss solo that made you go, oh, fuck, wow. Oh, my God. You know, you had to have uh, that solo that just made you. Uh, yeah, it was it was song three on a live, Got to Choose. That solo by Ace right there. Look, look. That solo made me just gave me goosebumps, and I was just like, "Oh my god, <laughs> he's he what he's doing there is so cool." And you know, everybody gives me shit for loving Ace, and I'm like, um, "Let me clarify, Ace between '73 and '79, unfucking touchable." I just saw him a couple years ago. He's not that good anymore. He's got a lot of problems. I still love Ace, so he's still Ace. You know, yeah, totally. You know, no. 100 percent dude it's it's ace dude it, it's like, ace I, we yeah. all know what it is you know we all know when you hear there are certain things that just make you go fractured mirror and you just hear certain things that just make you go oh rocket ride that just fucking make you go oh, that's a great one yep. yeah years old and you hear rocket ride and i'm going oh what's that about yes fakes travel <laughs> 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 we, we did like we did like a kit we did a kiss themed episode a few weeks ago and we were playing around with the hosts of the show like as like kiss characters and stuff so we were like you know bobby's gonna bobby's our ace and angels are peter and steve's our gene and i lay and i get to be paul and i'm like hey man we just we love our kiss dude for sure and i i can't think of a band that spans such a long longevity and hits and all the anthem songs they have, I mean, for real. I yeah. shout it out loud, rock and roll night. I love it loud. Lick it up. You're just like, man, they, the the hits just go on and on and on and on. You're just like, they're prolific writers. And it's and I, everybody used to give me shit for not for like, oh, kiss. They, they'd say to me, kiss is kid rock. I'm like, oh, kid kids rock. What? what? I remember watching Paul Lynn's special and getting yelled, you know, my dad going, you guys, you got to let me stay up and watch this. <laughs> it's just things like that. Look, even the last fucking Scooby-Doo thing that they did, I still got, you know, excited about. But that movie was fucking great. It was awesome. <laughs> I, you know, I, um, Matt Porter and I talk about it all the time. And look, they, you know, I'm looking forward to going uh, uh, rock and pod. And you guys will be there. We're yeah, we're, we're trying to hook up and walk down. We're going to be down there. Yeah. So it's the whole, th there's a lot of us, there's a lot of KISS fans down. You know, you go to, the cool thing about a KISS show, look, deadheads are deadheads. KISS fans are, are time, we're fucking timeless. We're like fucking Peter Pan. Yeah, you know, every town we go to, every time we play, there's a group of like Kiss Army people like us that just absolutely love Kiss, and you know, and you start talking to them at the merch table, and we'll just spend all night talking about Kiss. That's all we do. Nice, you know. It's, it's that thing. Look, if you're a horror movie fan, that's one thing that put us all together. Jay, Angel, uh, Jason, Jay, you know, Steve, all of us came together. It was love of music, but it was love yep. of all this. And it was like, there's not that many bands that we have. Look, we could say, hey, yeah, we're Zeppelin fans. Hey, we like, Ar I love Aerosmith. I'm going to love, but there's never been that band that, that really connects a lot of people like a Kiss fan. Agreed. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Definitely. A hundred percent. So fans, just to let you guys know, it is last call for alcohol. Final questions, final comments, get them into Angel. I will kick it down to him in a little bit before we wrap everything up. We're going to spin around the table one more time while we've got Sniper with us because we don't want to take up too much of his evening. But Sniper, yeah. what I want to do is kick it back to the Midnight Devils a little bit. What is your 
what is kind of your goal for the Midnight Devils? Like, how do you see the rest of this year? How do you want to see the band continue to, uh, to you know, digress? Well, um, the big main, main goal this year was to get the record done and uh, jump on a couple tours with some bands and, and promote the shit out of us. And, you know, we want to do a vi couple videos. Uh, I'll try to do one this year and probably like one in like January or February. If it depends on the tour schedule and what's, um, you know, the, the whole lockdown COVID thing is, you know, it's made it extremely difficult to be in a band, as you guys know. Oh, yeah. uh, even just doing small shows, we had talked about, well, we didn't want to do that live stream thing. We were like, man, I'm like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I think I'm like, I don't want to play to no fans. That's, I don't want to. So we said, let's just write and let's do a few things. Like watching porn on your phone. Yeah, stupid. Doesn't make any sense. But <laughs> uh, I know a lot of bands are doing it. And I'm like, I just, it's just I, not something I want to do because we live, we feed off their energy. And I just, I would have a hard time playing to a camera. I just, I think I, I like with no one there, like a live show. But we wanted to. Uh, like I said, it's like porn on your phone. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Bobby! But we, you know, we got we got a couple shows coming up. We got you know the pre-party, and then we got like Ingve, we're doing a couple opening shots for Ingve, and nice. then uh, in Florida, and then we have a. Uh, I think we we got another date. I can't tell you about on July seventeenth, and the sixteenth we're doing this festival called here in Nebraska, which is a big outdoor thing, and we got these dates lined up. It's just you know. Getting the record done was priority one, and then having a product. So when you go out on tour with another band or like for an opening slot with another band was uh, to get to that next tier level. You know, that's yeah. what we want. That's what was the goal to get to the next level. For so sure. we can start filming some of these. You know, we're at, we're gonna we're gonna piggyback with another band and do uh, like twenty five hundred seat halls and see how that goes. Okay. That's the goal. Oh, that's awesome, man! For sure, yeah. Right on. Bobby, let me kick it to you for your final segment, brother. This isn't a stumper, but I'm telling you, when you see Gene play something like this, tell me that didn't make you excited. So what I'm bringing up with this, the acoustic bass, uh, would the Midnight Devils ever think of taking their material? And it's always been cool to see bands go the acoustic route. And do the unplug thing. Would you guys ever do it just to, you know, throw it out as a, a dick tease? Well, wait, wait. We, we started, we actually started as an acoustic duo. And we did some of the songs we're doing now, we did acoustically. And like I said, we'd wear the full glam, everything, hair, makeup, and pink guitars. It just, the energy was cool, but it just didn't translate. And we've done a couple benefit shows or we, you know, we gave our time to somebody and it's cool to do once in a great while. What it's about just, putting it on for the fans who know you from that on the album as the extra album, you give them the, you give them the $9 album, but then you give them the $14 album where you got the, you know, five acoustic tunes that you did it that way, which yeah, is kind we, of badass. Yeah. We thought about doing like, uh, releasing one a month or something like and that might be something we could do like releasing acoustic sound once a month and uh, as a free download or something you know we had talked about doing something like that just to, to keep the fans it's just really hard it was really hard with jimmy being in chicago and us being in omaha to get together and do that kind of stuff during covid with the chicago had very strict travel restrictions and restrictions in general for covid but I'm not opposed to doing anything. I mean, I, you know, I, I, mean, I, I was, like playing. You know, it was kind of cool hearing like versions of Phil Collin and, and them doing like pour some sugar on me, just no drums or anything and just doing it that way. But you guys throwing it out, if you did it as a duo and you threw it out as, like you said, a freebie for the fans, that'd be badass. I just think you know, I'm one of those people about promoting everything and just getting the shit out there. And I'm going, Hey, if that's how, Hey, look, this is how it's wrote, but wait, do you fucking hear it on the album with the band? Yeah. It's, it, you know, it's doable for sure. I, I you know, I, I'm like open for stuff like that. Cool. Sam, if you're watching, like I said, I'm it it it. It, 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 you know, nothing wrong with mixing and mastering for free. 
<laughs> Absolutely, man. I'm 100%. in. Hell yeah, dude. We're all in for sure. Speaking of being all in, Angel. Angel. Get all up in this. Yeah, get in our business, Angel. Yeah, y'all Angel, kidding. we need, we need, very come on, get, on me. get your motorboat on, brother. Get up in this. Uh, check in for the last call for the from the fans. So, oh, one just popped up. Uh, Candy, you get the last fan question of the beautiful evening. What are your favorite history moments? <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one, a difficult one, and might not have just one answer. Yeah, that, that's it's the okay problem with that is got multiple. Is Kiss is so epic and so huge. I just I don't think you can pick one. Uh, yeah, but probably, there's that one moment that you just sat there as a kid and went, "Fuck, this was that thing." That believe you- it or not, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a weird one. When okay. when I got to see Kiss meets Phantom of the Opera, that was a huge <laughs> moment because I was just like. What in the world is this? But uh, you got to admit, even though you watched it when you're, and then you're like, this, oh, that was so great. And now as older, you go, okay, maybe I was not very smart when I was younger, but I still loved it. I still do. I'm like, I'm in. And there was a, there was some like NBC news story, at least where I lived, with this old dude that was talking to Kiss before, it was like a 45 minute interview before they, uh, played Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Opera, and I watched it. And back then, they didn't have video cassettes or nothing like that. We were just watching. And I think I had my tape recorder like up to the TV so I could at least hear it, you know. And this guy, Edward Newman or some old dude, interviewed Kiss, and they just talked about uh, with everybody in the band, the original four, and it was like mind blowing. That's the first time I'd heard him talk, you know, other than like on the live albums. So that's that's another one. Um, those are two that stick with me because I was very young and impressionable when that stuff was going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were all young and pretty back then. <laughs> now we're just pretty. <laughs> Some of us ain't even that. Trust me. I'm like, <laughs> all right. Well, it, it's Botox, 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 Botox. What, what is it? Name? <laughs> <laughs> Bobby, you know, it's just all about that ass. It's all about it. Hey, look. look, I'm looking forward to hanging with these guys. I love knowing that there are bands like do it, Sniper doing what you're doing with with the uh, it, it's kind of like trick or treating. You don't go out for the candy. It's going out for the whole thing. You're doing this. You're not doing the whole thing going, look, I'm not going to be a fucking rock star. We do it on the back, you know, the shoulders of our idols. Yeah. You know what? Uh, I get, I get, the, what I get a lot when, I, when I'm going out, like when we're in full battle rattles, the, the makeup and the hair and the, and the tight leather pants and the boots and all that, we get this, we get this. Why do you guys do that? And I go, well, I can tell you this, it ain't for the money. <laughs> and you know what? If it was for the money, I would have quit a long time ago because I don't make that much money doing this. In fact, if it wasn't for merch sales, we had to sank a long time ago. Love. I love playing guitar. Period. Yeah. You know, dude. it's I, I, you know, you guys know what I'm talking about when I say 23 hours a day. I'm having a. It's just like ah, uh, but that one hour I get to play is like the best thing ever. And so that's why you go out and put up with Jimmy Smelly Feet or Sam's Bad Breath or whatever. You know, you 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 deal with it because you love playing music and you make a difference in people's lives when uh, they come up to you and they say, oh man, that one song reminded me of, that one song you played reminded me of being on a dirt road and drinking beer and chasing girls. I'm like, that's exactly what it's supposed to do, man. It's supposed to make you forget that, that the world's in the shit right now. And you know, there's umpteen fucking things going on. We just want to come in here and not talk about politics or fuck what's going on. We just want to have fun, drink some beers and have fun. That's it. Forget about your problems. Leave them at the door, you know? There's enough of that out there. And I got to give a big shout out. Our, our producer, Jason, Breaks his ass all week. He's got a family and everything. And he can relate to a lot of this. Look, we n- none of us did this to sit here and be rich and famous. We did it for love of the music and the love of that. We love talking about music. You know, you know, it's 
It's all about our music and wood. Yeah. It, it really, <laughs> and, and we love, we love talking to people like you. We, you know, the days of the rock stars are gone. You know, uh, we grew up in a great era where we had the seventies and eighties. Uh, I don't think the newer artists understand or appreciate uh, the struggles that came involved. Look, we did, we couldn't learn shit off of fucking YouTube. We had to learn, learn it from picking up a needle and putting it backwards all the time. I, what the fuck was Eddie doing? How is he doing that? <laughs> I just used to run to the front of the stage so I could be close on Eddie's side so I could pick up some tricks and tips, you know? You'd, there wasn't big screens back then. It was just, and plus back then, it was a haze of smoke because you could smoke and there's plenty of weed going on and everything. Oh my else. God. I don't even know how you ran up the front. Of it. By the time you were in the back, by the time you got up, you're so stoned. It was like, hey, <laughs> hey. It was, it, was the, it was the best times ever, man. You know, now you're like this. Uh, right. There was no, you know, the whole shit about gun violence and this. I'm going, oh my God, I would have been shot 50 times for all the shit I did when I was little. Definitely a better time back then, man. Yeah. Definitely. Um, give me the bad news bears, Dave's any day. <laughs> uh, for 100%, sure. For sure. Angel, do we have a final question from you, brother, before I put a bow on it? Yeah. Uh, just speaking about back in the days, um, can you share a story of either buying your first guitar or your first album? Uh. Well, my first guitar, I, I, that, I showed you that I swept out a machine. I, I, worked to, I went to school and I'd run home and sweep out some machine shop for like a couple hours a day. And I think the wage was like, I'm not even joking, like $1.65 an hour or something like that. <laughs> all been there. And so I went to this music store that's no longer around. And the guy that ran it was this hippie dude named Vince. And he, he had that. <laughs> he had he had like a bunch of straps and he had that Ibanez destroyer, and I was like, that's just like Paul's on the. Uh, uh. So I'm like, I put I put it on layaway, and so I'd go to that machine shop every day after school and on Saturday, to like sweep it out and get my three bucks a day or whatever I got. It wasn't very much to buy this guitar, which was like two hundred and fifty dollars or something like that, you know. Wow. And an amp, and I did it, and I, I was like, the minute I got that guitar home, I knew like what I wanted to do right then and there. That was, I just wanted to be, you know, in front of people playing guitar. And then uh, it, it, you know, I think it humbles you to have to earn it versus someone handing it to you. Because yeah. if my parents would have bought me that guitar, it probably had been destroyed and thrown under the bed by now and ruined. But since I bought it and had to bust my ass and and you still fucking have it, which is I know that, that's that's yes. crazy. I love that guitar. I it's so funny. I I uh, just it was such a like a monumental time for me to get that that uh, I was like nothing's ever going to come between me and this guitar. I'm going, I'm, I just broke up. I broke up my girlfriend like three weeks ago or we've been, she moved out. She, I was somewhere and she moved out while I was, and when I came back, all her stuff was gone. I was like, what the hell? Oh, you know, fuck. and I've been talking to her on the phone. Well, she won't answer the phone. I have to, we have to text only because my voice upsets her and she starts crying. So we've been texting back and forth and I'm, I'm like, you know, the best thing about my guitars and my cats, they fucking, they love me no matter what. They're never mad care, at you. Know? Uh Oh, it looks, it looks like, it looks like Bobby's oh whipping God. it out again. So this is one of my first guitars. My first one was an Dang. Ibanez Roadstar, but this is a- That's a Kramer Pacer, right? American, made in yeah. to New Jersey. Yeah. But Brian May pickups in when they came out and a Fred Path, you know, Path Pro, you know, the original Satch pickup in it. So, uh, and again, Adam, Adam Reaver jobs on the back, but- uh, yeah, it's my first one, and uh, I, I know what you mean. Look, girlfriends come and go, you know. Uh, yes, they do. Yes, but a guitar. You hope they come more than they go, but it doesn't ever work out that way. You no, know that? Never. The greatest thing, I, I've gotten more of an orgasm touching this wood than myself. <laughs> I totally get that. I totally get that. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, 
Sniper, man, we can't thank you enough for spending some of your evening with us, man. Our, our big thing, because of how much we love to do this show, is like that you had a good time. You liked your questions, you had a good time, and you felt that you were respected and that this was worth your evening. Absolutely. I had, if the honor was over here, man, because I all the pleasure is on my side because I love talking to people who are like-minded and like love music, are not judgmental, and they respect your opinion even though they might disagree with you, but they respect it. And that is the most, that is the, the most satisfying thing you can do is respect another person's opinion. Even though you might feel rats, the best band in the world, but I feel kisses or whatever. And you see, you go, Oh yeah, cool. Right on. I love rat too, man. Cool. You know, totally. that is the utmost respect. And I, you guys, the questions were awesome. You guys, I love the guitar game. I, I loved every, you know, I had a blast. And like I said, the pleasure is all over here, man. I, I had a blast, and thanks for having me on. Anytime, dude. And this and this interview is for you, Jimmy, Sam, to use as you guys see fit. Uh, we'll, when we get it up on YouTube, we'll also send you that link as well. So if this can benefit you guys in any way, by all means, definitely use it. But Metal Thank Summoners... You. We absolutely, brother. Metal Summoners, we love you guys. Make sure you're hitting up all of Sniper and Sam and Jimmy and the Midnight Devil socials. Follow them, support them out on tour. Don't forget, as far as the M3 area down here, they're going to be doing the M Pre Party Cancun Cantina next month, right before 4th of July weekend for Dave Dillman, Detoxin, and Bradley BLE's M Pre Party. So definitely get out to support those guys. New album, fingers crossed, horns <laughs> up for the end of this year. So we're definitely stoked for new Midnight Devils music. Uh, for ourselves as well, give us, show us that love and that support. Hit up all of our socials. Definitely follow us on Facebook. It's where we go live. Smash the subscriber button on YouTube so you can get all of our interviews. Hit us up on Twitter and Instagram as well. As Bobby put it out, really exciting next week. The official announcement comes out on Friday, but because we love you and you guys get it early, Mark Hudson next week as the guest on the Metal Summit. So we're really looking forward to doing that. But again, follow all of our socials, follow the Midnight Devil socials, and you guys have an open invitation for any time that uh, you want to – got anything that you guys need to say that you want to announce, we're happy to assist, brother. Well, I, you know, I, I've been talking to Sam, but maybe we can fucking uh, get uh, – you have you uh, like – blow out the first song, you know, like present cool. the first song, out, you know, that we put out. Maybe we could do something like that. I'll talk to Sam about that. That Sounds way you can like world premiere the song or something, you know, That's great, man. We would definitely or even a video, you know, that'd be awesome. And hopefully I'll see you. I hope you get out of work and can come down there. Hey, worst, hang out. Com worst comes to it. I get there towards the tail end and we're just partying it up after the show. That's cool too. Absolutely, for sure. Got a hotel room. Don't worry about it. You know, look, I have sheep, goats, whatever. Exactly. Well, you, well, Bob, Bobby, remember, dude. You know that I. You know that I know that you always have a moe and shandon in a pretty cabinet. Cabinet, of course. <laughs> <laughs> metal summoners thank you guys so much we love you guys to death we you guys are the reason that we do this you guys yes. just fucking rule an official announcement on friday but that announcement will be mark oh. hudson next wednesday here on the metal summit we will see you guys there for everybody on the metal summit for our executive producer jason Perlsworth, yes. who we love to death for the metal yes. summoners for the hosts, for Bobby Dreyer, Angel Alamo, for Psycho Steve, I'm Jay. Thank you again, Chris, Sniper, Heinlein, the Midnight Devil. Thank you. Thank you again so much, brother. We will see you guys next week. As always, you've been watching the Metal Summit. Yes. <laughs>